Path of Night is an actual play Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the classic world of darkness. We're all friends, we're here to have fun, but our story can include graphic violence, drug use, sexual content, and other mature themes. We've talked at our table about safety, comfort, and consent, both as players and storytellers. We know what to expect, we're all excited to be here, and we want you to feel the same. So listener discretion is advised. Now, let's walk the Path of Night. If you would like to support the Path of Night podcast and the crew in our projects, we currently accept contributions to coffee.com slash path of night. And thank you for listening. Last time on Path of Night, Johnny and Wynn meet with the former Sheriff Weathers and entrust their new ally Nara's safety to him. Weathers fills them in on the new Scourge Runwick. He also warns Johnny that his sire might be back in town. Johnny and Wynn return to court where Brett and Miles update the coterie. Britta explains her arrangement with Elsa Linden, and the group discusses the cost of apology. Renwick argues with both Miles and Johnny in turn, throwing accusations around in public. Elsa silences the argument between Johnny and Renwick before she meets with Miles. The two finally see eye to eye. At the end of the night, Neil has a mysterious visitor. Once everyone is awakened, you each receive your summons to court. Miles, uh, you are expected to help maintain order while Upton Roland makes his decisions regarding what is to happen about this uh, sudden spike and Asamite incursions into the domain. All right. Is he less crazy today? You're not really sure. You're you're informed of this via third party. Gotcha. One of his ghouls. Gotcha. On top of that, I need to do something about Marcos. What are you doing about Marcos? Well, we need to do something because I can't keep a dead body in the bathtub for days on end. I do believe that Johnny helped arrange some of the other bully boys to handle handle the cleanup. I just wanted to make sure. sure, And make sure the body was put in a place where it would be both respectful and remove suspicion about where it was found. Gotcha. Um, and why he died. Okay. An important thing to note for you, Miles, is that you wake with three more blood gone. Three more blood gone. Yes. So one from waking up and three additional? Yes. Wasn't I rising with like my full blood pool regardless before? Yes. Something has changed? You're unclear as to why that's happening. What is clear is that um, you're down blood... And the demon has been less vocal interacting with you. During your entire trip back to the Haven, it didn't really make any, you know, Faustian offers. It just sort of let you go home. Well, suspicious. I don't have the energy for it right now. So I think I'm going to take its silence as a blessing for now. And hopefully it's not a curse. And... Head towards Elysium to... You get that feeling that demons aren't exactly known for their blessings. Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but Miles does not have the mental space to deal with that right now. <laughs> He's got to keep Neil from dying, and then we'll go from there. So what do you do? I will head to Elysium, and the uh, first thing I'll see is check in on Neil to make sure nobody's done anything in toward Jordan. Neil, you wake up being tended to by Toriador. They bring you someone to feed from one of their blood dolls. They very kind of politely indicate that, you know, no harm should come to this person. But you're offered, uh, you're able to feed three. Neil only has to feed two. He just takes a little bit, just enough to, from yesterday and waking up today. There's like a, an uncomfortable amount of like joy that this doll experiences when you feed from them. Mm-hmm. And then they're on their way. Neil's not used to feeding off of conscious people, and it just it feels weird, and he clearly does not like it. Um, good, good evening. He li- just sort of awkwardly looks at the Toreador that are around, doesn't really know what to say, offers like a hello, and then just falls silent again. They offer incredibly polite hellos, but they make no attempt whatsoever to initiate conversations with you. Do I remember that figure coming to me right before daytime? Oh, yeah. I sort of check. I'm still not. They The Toreador took me out of my shackles and everything, so I'm mm-hmm. still just kind of hanging out. They do give you a little bit of a weird look when you start patting yourself down. Yeah. Just 
Checking to make sure I'm me, I guess, that I'm everything's okay. How do you check to make sure you're you? Uh, do any of you have like a mirror or anything that I could borrow? I have a day in court today. Yeah, one flips open a little pocket mirror and I pass it to you. Neil doesn't really know what he's doing. He's just kind of looking at himself in mm-hmm. the mirror, trying to make sure he's he's him as best as anyone who has no conception of that tries to check. Uh, you find yourself continuing to have no conception of that. Great. Yeah, sounds about right. Close the little compact and give it back to them with a, a thanks without having fixed my hair or done anything. I still look like shit. So uh, what time is... When When am I... What's the... Do we know what the plan is? Do we... No schedule has been announced. But when it is time, you will be escorted and uh, the trial will begin. Hey, I might not get another chance. Uh, I've always wanted to ask this. How do you... How do you how do you get people to like you? I kind of look between each other. Well, it isn't for everyone. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's what I. And Neil just kind of falls silent and just hangs out. You don't really have anything else to do. Britta will first show up to Elysium having dressed very nicely, and she will see if she'll be allowed to visit Neil. You are indeed allowed to visit Neil. All right. Britta will thank whoever let her in. Walk up to Neil, kind of looking him over to see where his head's at. That Uh, looks terrible. There is a visible look of relief on Neil's face when he sees Britta. Just an absolute, like, oh my, thank God, like a friendly face. Because it's the first time in a while since he's seen a friendly face. As she's coming over to Neil, she's kind of like walking slowly, uh, trying to keep like a gentle countenance about herself. She says, hey, and as she does so, she pulls a comb out of her pocket and is intent to approach Neil to actually fix his hair. Neil moves as if to take the comb, just like, oh, thanks, I'll do and then kind of realizes her intention Mm. and is like, oh, right, yeah, that's probably smart, (laughs) and puts his hand back down and sort of gives leeway for her to just make him not look like a man who lives in a trash pile that he is and looks up. Um, Hey, thank you. You guys did this for me. So it's nothing to thank me for. And as Britta's talking, she'll uh, comb Neil's hair and kind of like part it nicely. It's probably a weird experience for him. I uh, imagine she's probably not doing it the way that he's used to. No, probably not. (laughs) Which is just run his fingers through it and be like, all right. I believe his hair was described as a grease curtain it, at some yes, point. Yeah, no, yeah, it's absolutely not. Mm-hmm. You know, vampires don't, aren't greasy, but no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very gentle touch, as if Britta's not entirely certain how much physical contact uh, Neil's ready for at this moment. But she's being very efficient. Like, it's combing the hair, and she flip, uh, she moves down to kind of flip his collar cracked. <laughs> it's definitely one of them tucked, like, inside the shirt. It just has, yeah, mm-hmm. the whole thing's a mess. Mm-hmm. As she's doing all of this and sort of, like, gently making him look presentable, um, no, th- thank you specifically. I don't, if you weren't here, I don't think I would have had a chance here because you were the X Factor in all of this. He, um, I talked to Reese yesterday. And? Um, he, he's a plan, had a plan for, for me, obviously, uh, for Johnny, for Miles, for Wynn, um, and honestly, having known them as long as I did, he, he, he basically had them pegged pretty well for how their reactions would go and how they would spiral and everything would fall apart. And, um, he didn't have, he didn't have a plan for you. He, he asked questions about you. He was curious. He didn't know what to make of you or, or how to factor you in. He underestimated and, and if it weren't for you, not, it's not just me that's getting a chance here. It's, it's every single one of us. Um, he was, he looked so, I don't speak French, but he looked so pissed. When Elsa came in the room, and I, I can 
you know, I don't speak French and I don't speak Latin, but I, I, I can, I can put puzzle pieces together. So, I don't know if anybody else is going to see it, but thank you for all of our sake. Thank me when it's over. All right. Well, depending on how it goes, I might not get a chance to thank you when it's over, so I wanted to do it now. Well, I want to hear it after. Well, yeah, I would like to say it after, too, but... Listen, Neil, this isn't going to stop here. Oh, I know. And I need you and all of us to be together as we make it through this. I'm gonna, we're going to try. I'm going to try, but I, I, I honestly don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Uh, okay, can- Neil, try and pretend like you're talking to us, maybe. Okay. You mean when I'm talking to the prince? Be respectful and put your best foot forward, but, you know, speak like you're talking to us, like like you know your center with us. I, there's a, there's a thing. Johnny files into this trap sometimes. Miles does too. It's something I have in common. Um, they think that the truth matters, or that fairness or justice matter, and that's not what this is. Whether or not I live or die here, it's whether or not I have the political clout and I don't, or whether or not people just kind of like me enough, and no one has ever liked me enough, except for those guys and the Nosferatu. I I realize that popularity games suck in this court, but you can get through by by showing yourself that you're you're not a threat, by showing yourself that you can be helpful. All these things. I mean, you haven't done anything, Neil. That depends on what the prince thinks. But you can make him think that. Are the Tremere here? When I walked in, did I see Tremere? You did not. No. Okay. Are there other Toreador in the room still? No, but is left alone with you. Okay. There's one other thing, and I don't know, I don't know how to you know that guy? The one from the subway? The the T up in Boston, the the web of knives. Yeah. The one that's coming for me. Yeah. I saw him at sun up last night. Can you make any sense of that? I mean, why are you so alive? I don't know. The world went silent and the door opened and I was so tired because the sun was already up or coming up and... Neil, could he have searched your memories when you were asleep? I don't know. I have no idea. All right. Britta shakes her head. Thank you for telling me. I hope that's a tomorrow problem because I have no idea how to handle that right now. I'll keep an eye out, okay? I'll, I'll keep a lookout for that person. But if you're alive, that means something, and that means something that I, I guess they don't want you dead, so... Well, might be worse. Um, hey, I, I didn't get to hear, uh, did anyone ever find Nara? Nara's okay. Neil doesn't say anything, but sort of bites both of his lips in that kind of, like, sad relief. Like, sort of bittersweet relief, like, oh, thank God she's okay, but, you know... You gotta focus on you, Neil. Brit is very good at reading people. It is pretty clear that Neil does not think he has a chance, but is putting on the brave face and the thumbs up Mm -hmm. to try and make her think that he thinks he has a chance. Mm -hmm. Just to, like, sort of be weirdly, reflectively comforting of, like, hey, I'm gonna die, but all right, I'll try my best. Mm -hmm. Not in a good headspace. Very confused but more worried about everybody else in the Coterie than than his own life. You are going to get through, Neil. Okay. Okay. Um, hey, any, uh, I asked the other Toreador and they just, they just said it wasn't for me. Any advice on how to, on how to get people to like me? You like them. I do like them. It's never helped. You show that you like them. You play to the things that they like about themselves. Okay. Thanks, um... Thank, thanks for the advice and the hairstyle. All right. Um, Good luck. And yeah. Britta will offer a hug. He will hug her back. It does seem to take comfort in the act of like physical touch. Mm-hmm. And then as sort of the hug breaks, he'll like have both hands on her shoulders still. 
go, hey, look, I'm going to try, but there's no guarantees here. If this goes bad for me, you need to make sure. You need to be the calming influence. Uh, because they'll just hype each other up. And that's what Reese wants to happen. For Wynn and Johnny and Miles to fly off the handle. Because I'm dead. You need to keep it together so that this doesn't domino. I promise you that I'll keep an eye on them. Okay. You keep an eye on you. Okay, yeah, I know, I get that, but... Promise me that you'll try to live. I promise that I will try and live pending the costs. You promise me that you will keep them together and alive. I'll because do my best. you are the X Factor here, okay? Also, uh, Reese forcibly made me tell him about you. I don't want to burden everything right here, but um, I, I, I kept most of it under wraps uh, despite the pain. But um, you... Uh, he does know that your your flashbacks are in black and white. Um, he's a smart guy. He might start to put stuff together. Uh, I kept everything else under my hat as best as I could. But, you know, I didn't tell him about anything else. But he got that much out of me. Sadness in her kind of flickers over Britta's expression before she can kind of push it back. But she kind of, like, nods. Just looks at Neil and says, Yeah, that's... I think that's going to be an issue, so I, um, I'm going to need you to help me through that once we handle this. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. It was, he forced it out of me. There was, there's a ritual. I understand. I, I, I don't understand, but I understand, okay? I, you don't need to apologize. Just let's do this. Okay. All right. And she gives him a sincere but kind of strong nod. He and gives a very sort of weak but attempt sincere nod back and she will walk out meanwhile most of the bully boys are present at this time all of the court has been called to meet and be present for this the only person who has not arrived is jane is weathers here weathers does arrive okay johnny definitely gives a nod over to uh, weathers uh, the nod is reciprocated. The uh, Tremere have showed up? The Tremere are now showing up, yes. Britta's eyes are scanning the crowd for Nyx. Uh, Nyx is also present. Wynne is just kind of standing in the back, arms crossed, kind of looking at the floor. She's not sure what benefit it is for her to be here. This this feels like a deliberate way of getting her to fly off the handle and break Elysium. Britta will also try to gather the coterie to stand together. I think until... Trial time, I am working to both bolster the prince's general reputation by mingling and talking with people, mm -hmm. and also at the same time trying to purvey a general sense of Neil, in Neil by construct me, essentially being a, a worthwhile save for the domain and stuff like that, and like trying to basically bolster that through just general intermingling and talking and things and a couple of things that I haven't been able to do since we've been on the road and kind of reestablish those ties and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, it is decided by Upton Rollins that Reese will prosecute and bring forward the charges against uh, Neil and you, Miles, mm -hmm. will defend him. Question from Johnny. Is it like Jane to miss a court event? Uh, absolutely not. Her thing is, like, she she's the political eyes and ears for the Bruja clan. Hopefully trying to sneak out before things get started, Johnny will head up to the sheriff's office, go through the, the Rolodex up there, find her number, and give her a call. She does not answer. Does she have, like, a, uh, a, a message on her, or, like, a, uh, a way to leave a message with her? She does have an answering machine. Johnny will leave her a quick message, basically just... Hey, Jane, it's, uh, it's Johnny. Uh, this is, uh, kind of a weird flip of, uh, roles. Usually I'm the one who's being called by you. Just want to make sure everything's all right. Um, hit up one of the bully boys or, uh, Weathers if you can. Or send me a, a message to my beeper. Uh, let me know if you need any backup. Johnny hangs up and kind of frowns at the phone. Takes another quick look out down at the court because the, the sheriff's office looks down over the court, right? Uh, yes, it does. Renwick is in attendance as well? Renwick is present. 
Johnny kind of like from the seclusion of the court gives him a some eyes. How's he? What's he looking like tonight? Uh, he's actually largely seated with the Nosferatu. Uh, they've got a pretty like professional demeanor that they've put together. They're they're, they're seated, they're orderly, and uh, it looks like they're you know ready to bear witness to whatever happens next. Has Roland showed up yet at all, or is this coming? All his stuff coming through is. It's all coming from his ghouls, and he's kind of hanging out at his office waiting for the wolves to finally arrive. <laughs> so I see he's less cra- not less crazy tonight. He is oh. not. Johnny will hang out up in the uh, sheriff's office as long as he can, um, and once he starts to see that things are starting to progress, he'll give Jane one last call. I'm assuming she doesn't pick- still doesn't pick up? She still does not pick up. He uh, leaves another brief message being like, hey, please call me. And then heads back down to uh, make sure that he's present for appearance's sake. While Johnny is making calls to Jane, Wynn kind of looks for Miles in the crowd. You find them there mingling and kind of getting ready. Hey. Yes? What can I do to be of use here? Do you have any friends that you've made? I have you guys. There's got to be other people you've dealt with or... Other uh, gangrel that are wanderers and don't come into the domain very often. I mean, unless you've got something that can absolutely prove that Neil is Neil and I don't have to go through this whole thing, it's going to be a lot of weird wordplay, I'm imagining, or I'm not exactly sure what Reese's case is going to be like yet. I don't know either, and I feel like me being here is a huge liability for us. I mean, you're aware of how you're feeling, so maybe that should be fine. You've met me, right? Right. And we've defended Elysium before. All right. We need... I I don't know how this is going to play out yet. He's... The prince is still very weird. Unless you have something to stop him from being weird, then I don't know what else we can do. Because if we could get him as the judge or whatever it may be, then then we might have a better chance. He's more mercurial. And it's something we can play a little bit better than... Wait, who is judge of this? Reese is prosecuting. I'm defending. Is it the Tory? The prince. Oh, it is the <laughs> prince. Okay. Is he going to do it from upstairs? You're not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should talk to Neil. And make sure that he's ready. And the better face that he can put on, the better it is. Neil. You begin screaming incoherently in the room that you're in. It is so loud that those outside of the room, such as the members of your quartery and the entirety of court, kind of starts turning their heads towards the room that you are screaming from because it is that loud. Wind runs toward him. Um... Bully boys kind of like put their hands up. They're like, we're, we're going to look at it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Get the fuck out of my way. That like immediately triggers like an aggressive reaction from the oh, bra. We're like, you get the fuck out of my way. <laughs> I'm not your bitch. I'm not your bitch. Uh, yeah, you are. Enough. Let me through. They kind of nod <laughs> and get out of the sheriff's way. Britta follows along. Right. And you guys follow in my wake. Then. Like I, basically I signal like follow behind me as we move in towards the screaming Neil. For Neil, words echo through his mind. There is no such thing as independence in the jihad. There is only a lack of awareness of one's masters. And he feels like his mind is being sort of prodded and poked. Like his psyche is kind of being pulled apart. Like the skin being pulled from a fruit. And... What he sees is a boy with charcoal skin. It has no eyes. And it walks through these dark halls until it comes to a throne room. And in this throne room, there is a man with jet black skin. A thick beard and scarring on his face and neck. And he knows that they have a conversation. One that is peaceful at first and simply addresses a change 
that has happened to this culture over the course of millennia. And the boy makes it clear that there is to be a return to the old ways, and that their neophyte god Allah has no place in their sacred mountain. And the man, scarred, but somehow still quite noble in appearance, explains to this boy something that he seems to believe that the boy simply doesn't understand, which is that Hakim had given him on life, but Allah gave him life, and if forced to choose between the two, he would choose Allah always. And the boy shrugs, accepting the choice made by this man, and with a wave of a hand, incinerates the Methuselah as though he were never there. The charcoal boy approaches the throne, seemingly aware of his surroundings despite having no eyes. He kneels beside the black throne and calls forth the next of Hakim's wayward children so that they might be corrected next. And then you come too, feeling as though your skin has been set ablaze by whatever this this monster is. Neil gasps. Uh, when he comes back to consciousness, uh, like batting at his skin as if he's actually afraid that it's on fire and, and looking around with like wild panicked eyes, not really sure where he is yet, completely f- freaking out. He looks like he wants to just run through the walls uh, just to get away from the inside of his own head. No thoughts of the fact that he's about to be on trial. N- no awareness whether or not anybody else is in the room with him. Just complete psychotic panic of lack of understanding and and trying to order just all these insane thoughts that just assaulted him like clawing at himself basically and muttering over and over again under his breath nonsense phrases in arabic basically just they, they aren't even if you speak the language it's, it's not it's nonsense it's nothing it's just a bunch of thoughts all coming out at once mashed together that his his vocal cords and his body can't keep up with uh, as he continues just to rock back and forth like batting at his skin and muttering. When can you grab him? Mm-hmm. Wynn approaches with her hands up. It's Neil. Uh, it's okay. It's, uh, it's no, okay, it's, Neil. Well, Neil, you're here. It's us. Lex, did I get a... I may have no idea, but... Do I have an impression that that is something that just happened or will be happening or has? Yeah. Okay. Who is present in the room with Neil? Um, At least myself and these two so far. I don't know who else may have come in. It's just the single story order that I've been watching him at that point. They open the door for you and let you in. Bully boys are keeping everybody else out currently. Johnny will actually uh, lead the formation of bully boys to keep everyone out of the room. Okay. Uh, uh, What? Where, where, where are we? What's, what's going on? Neil, we're in Elysium. Okay. Okay. You're in the same room you've been in for a day. <sighs> it's just us here. It's okay. And she kind of crouches down in front of him. She kind of gives him space. She doesn't try to touch him because it looks like he's kind of feeling some sensory things. But she crouches down in front of him, his hands still raised to show him that she's not going to do anything. As his... He starts to come back to himself a little bit. He does sort of lean forward, like the rocking sort of leans forward when he stops batting at himself, just to sort of lean in to to win when she gets close, just for some sense of like touch and stability. Flashing back a long time ago to when he gave Britta a little pendant that was like, hey, if you ever lose track of reality, here's a great way to to do it. And he's, he's kind of using win as like a pendant right now as a as a way to stay tethered to this reality she reaches out and takes his hands um i saw i saw the herald Urshugi. he he's gonna or is or has or is doing i don't know i know what the schism is i know what it's gonna be it's so much worse than I thought it was going to be. I didn't understand. I didn't know. I know now. I know why they wanted me to see it. Wynn nods. 
It's gonna be okay. I need to. I need to tell Nora. I need to talk to her. I need to. We'll find a way to get the message to her. Okay. Okay. I know you're hurting. I know that this was a lot. I can tell. But I need you to try and pull it together, okay? It was so easy for him. Like it was nothing. What was nothing? Just a wave of hand and a Methuselah evaporated. Wynne kind of has her eyes go wide. Like, like it was, like it was a child's game. That kind of easy. There's like a weird twitch at the word child, like a, like a, he's suppressing like hysterical laughter, but has enough of himself to realize like that maybe this isn't the time, but it's, it's a fraying thread keeping him together. Wynne doesn't understand a lot of what he's talking about. This is, she knows a lot about spirits and she knows a lot about the dead. This is a different branch that she knows nothing about. But what she does know is that this is important and this is important to Neil. And she squeezes his hands. Said, that's a tomorrow problem, right? I'm, maybe not. It might be happening right now. I don't know. What do you think we can do about it right now? I I need I need time. I need a minute. I I need I need I don't know. Okay, well we're going to try and get you a minute, okay? We might gonna... not have that. We need Neil. Can you Any I have a Dang it. I I have an idea. Okay. I think I might kill two birds with one stone, but it's I don't know. It's a risk. Miles, I I need Rita, you I There's going to be a schism amongst the children of Hakim, and anyone who stays at Alamut and doesn't bend the knee to the Herald and return to the old ways is going to be killed. And Jubair and Nara, and there has to be more. There are Asamites who are going to not want to return to the old ways, who are going to want to follow Allah, who are going to want to flee all the mud and they're going to need a place to go some place that can protect them at least a little from the children of Hakim and they haven't managed to get me yet which means the prince wants weapons right yeah he does what if we just go bald faced what if I just offer him weapons I mean that's borrowing against tomorrow too I'd have to talk to Nara I'd have to talk to all of the children of Hakim I, I don't know what but... if you just Put yourself forward as a potential ambassador. Not making promises, not saying that you'll get these weapons, but saying that you believe that, well, I don't know about talking about visions in court. Britta kind of looks to Miles at that. Probably not a good thing. I don't think so. But if the topic comes up, if they keep on asking you about your connections, then you could put it forwards theoretically to say, if Asamites were to try to ally with the Camarilla, then you, being a being a part of the Camarilla, you could help. Uh, um, here's the other problem, though. I, I, I don't know, Miles. You're longer term politically savvy than I am. Go ahead. Um, the the this thing that can just kill Methuselah is like it's nothing. If we harbor the things it's hunting, oh, it doesn't even matter because they want to punish all the children of Cain. Miles. Mm -hmm. Ever since he's mentioned the name Rashulgi, there has been this stirring inside of you. And for the first time, you begin to wonder if the demon that hides under your skin is afraid. I don't know if you should talk about the visions unless you have any sort of evidence to say that they're present or real or any of that, but I do think that it brings up a good idea, right? Like Brokering... New allies to the domain and to the Camarilla, if presented well, and in the sense that it would be a historical thing, a thing that has not yet happened before, may be a good way to lure the prince in. He would be... I think he might latch onto something like that, as long as he wasn't fearful of the consequences. How bad would it be if this was something we talked about, and then I talked to to Nara or to... Do you bear dead? Uh talk to Nara and said, hey, what if this is something I could get you? And she said, no. And no one was interested. And this was an insane idea that I'm having. 
right at the brink of death. Well, you're you... thinking too far forward. Right. Is there so much a thing as too far forward? Yes. Uh, to be fair, Nara at least could be an individual, and she does owe us. So even if we get one individual... Well, I also owe her. Right. That's why I use the word us. Okay. For what it's worth, Nara mentioned that she could call in reinforcements if we needed them. It's a tomorrow topic, whether or not you would be successful as an ambassador. Right now, you need people to like you, right? So if you can put forwards that you have the ability, the unique ability, that no one else has a connection that could make the prince more powerful and to show your dedication to this domain, that might work. And these allies would be probably in opposition to your previous sire, Possibly. We don't have to go into the details. He... But that ought to be driven home. Yeah. Johnny pokes his head in from outside. Hey guys, it's getting a little bit uh, tense out here. What What's going on? What's the play? What am I telling these people at court? Um, Neil, sorry. Is it normal to say that you just had a Malkavian kind of no, moment? No, that's not cool. But uh, I did have a panic attack. He panicked. That's fine. I'm looking more at you, Sheriff. Yeah, come on out. All right. I'll follow. Wynn kind of still stays Neil by Neil, gives his hands one more squeeze. He squeezes them back tremulously. Essentially, I'll go out to the crowd and be like, he was suffering uh, some aftershocks from yesterday's interrogation, and it just hit him all of a sudden. We apologize to the disturbance of the Elysium and your time here. It's being handled now. He's all good. For one of the back doors, the prince enters. He looks disheveled and nervous. His tie is not on correctly. Oh my god, I start heading over there immediately. Uh, <laughs> beside him is a rather concerned Reese, who like silently encourages you to fix this immediately. <laughs> so like he comes out and like I try to like get him to go back in the other way so that we can get his ghouls to fix him. Johnny seeing uh, how nervous Miles is will just kind of raise his voice up. And start kind of shouting at the crowd to hopefully draw their attention to him. Bretta will pass off the comb in her pocket to Miles. All right, everybody. The sheriff spoke up. I expect you all to listen to what he said. I try to get him into a back room to like... He, he complies. Yeah. Oh, you're great. So, you're not... We need to get you ready to preside over him. I don't want to be touched by anyone. And putting this tie on was more difficult than expected. It is a trying time out there. Tell me. Are they ready out there? Uh, they're mostly ready, yes. They have heard what you've been doing for the domain, and I've done much to... As you asked of me. Miles, I figured out how I'm going to resolve all of these issues, and I think you're going to like what I do. He gives a wink. Would you like to let me in so that we can... <laughs> You'll see. Uh, plan better? He just kind of walks out. <laughs> I look over at Reese and I'm like, it, like, is this really what, like, essentially with a look like, is this really what you want? Reese kind of gives you a look like, this didn't have to be Prince. Here's your Prince. And then he walks out. <laughs> So outside. Yep. <laughs> I follow, like, I'm trying to think of something. And I'm Upton Rulands confidently takes his seat. Domain of New Haven. We are gathered here to... Confirm the guilt of a returning nemesis to the domain. And in addition to this, we are gathered to indicate that New Haven is a strong domain and that it will not be sullied by outsiders who would interfere with our traditions. And so I would like the, the newly acknowledged kindred, Britta, to come forward and... Uh, let it be known that she was um, acknowledged against her will by infamous members of Operation Longbow. But fret not, I have devised a means of ensuring her loyalty to this domain. And he extends his wrist and quietly gestures for Britta to drink. What is the general reception of the crowd to this declaration? An alarming number of kindred seem to think this is kind of perfectly normal. Other kindred... Some of them you see, they're like counting on their fingers how many times she's already done this to her. Others are like kind of like giddy to see some like drama and like suffering at the hands of other kindred. And some smart ones are looking a little wary 
with how casually he has simply commanded someone to drink from him. Is there anyone of particular note that is has that reaction? Or are the, are the people of uh, note in the court kind Elsa of keep, keeping Linden, their things to their chest? Elsa Linden does not seem overly thrilled. But as far as like high-profile kindred of the domain, she's the only one. As Britta does start to walk up to the prince, she does cast a glance over her shoulder towards Elsa Linden to assess that. You, again, quickly get the impression that she's not overly pleased, but she makes no movement to act against the prince. And that glance being over, Britta continues walking up. As she gets up there and does a bow, I'll be like, Your Grace. Not yet, Miles. <sighs> we haven't even gotten to the good part yet. May I offer a suggestion? I'm not in the crowd, Miles. Quiet down. This is a little extreme. No, it's not. This is the Camarilla. Watch. It'll be fine. He holds his wrist out. <laughs> There's no stopping this. <sighs> Your Grace. I wish that I had the opportunity to be acknowledged by you. I'm glad that I can now serve the domain in this capacity, too. Good. Let all who question whether or not Britta is in service to the Sabant or other ne'er-do-wells be aware that she is loyal to New Haven and not Boston. I'm loyal to you, Your Grace. Yeah, I hold his wrist up to her. Your Grace, you have my loyalty. Is this necessary? If I have my loyalty, you are more than ready to prove it, no? Yes. Then do so. If Johnny looks like he's about to say something. (laughs) He does. (laughs) Wynne steps up, grips his shoulder. This sucks. Not now. Johnny gives a long, hard look at Wynne. We cannot. Looks like he is about to fight back tears and kind of nods slowly at her and grips her shoulder back. And she just keeps a hold on him, both for herself and for him. Thank you, Wynne. Good move. Thank you. (laughs) And with that, Britta maintains, you know, flickering eye contact with the prince down to his wrists and up to his eyes, down to his wrists, up to his eyes, approaches, takes his wrists carefully into her hands, pauses, kind of hoping that there will be some kind of interruption. It never comes. Wynne squeezes Johnny's shoulder harder. She slowly forces her head down to take the bite. The blood tastes just as it did before, except now you can feel its power surge through you. It is addictive. You were warned about the blood bond before, but you didn't realize that it was so all-encompassing. And now you feel that were he to simply ask, you would rush to drink again. Britta's posture visibly shifts. You can see her weight fall more on her toes towards the prince. Like her hips incline just a bit more towards him. The way that her hands grip around his wrists is more protective. And there's a bit of like a trace of her index finger along his forearm as she drinks. When he has decided you have had your fill, there's this light shove, as if you are being dismissed off to go stand with the others. She pulls away and makes sure to get the blood, uh, to lick the blood off her lips, kind of maintaining eye contact for a second. He gives a satisfied smile at that. And dips back to the coterie. Let it be known... That the will of the Camarilla is order. Order in all things. And any signs of chaos will be subjugated or broken. Britta is properly subjugated by the Camarilla now. Mm. Our mind is bent to our will. And she will serve loyally. Isn't that so, Britta? Of course, Your Grace. Having the opportunity to answer him positively seems to fuel her. And even, like, sitting down with the coterie again, she inclines and sort of, like, angles herself, her hands falling into her lap so that she can kind of look at him more when she says it. And now we will address the other source of chaos that has come to this domain to wreak havoc. Sheriff, bring forth the Malkavian Asamite thing. His name is Neil, and I will go get him. Yes, that one. His name is allegedly Neil.
So I'll go back there and I will have Neil rise and dust him off a little bit and take a second, straighten him out. Hey, Miles. Is it it's time to go? Be prepared. Um, yeah, Britta tried to prep me for... Yeah, you, okay, yeah, I'm... He's extraordinarily eccentric. I think something the Malkavian prince in Boston did. So... Is he here? No. Okay. He sent him a letter and then he went oh. bonkers. Oh. Yeah, how... What kind of crazy? Paranoid. Just paranoid? Megalomania, but that's kind of normal. Yeah, okay. He can... He's just more paranoid than we usual. We can... Some of us can do that. Through letters and art and things. Great. I don't know if you have anything to counteract that. That'd be great. But other... That's not unless subtle. Unless you want me to... <laughs> no. Okay. No, that's, no. Never mind. I was just hoping. No, sorry. Well... Therapy. Talking to him. Really calming him down. Helping him to work through his delusions. Not a possibility. Okay. Well, then I got nothing. Yep. Sorry. I mean, I guess it's technically worse for me. Let's go do this. Remember, <laughs> you're Neil, not over your sire. Yeah, I know that. Good. Neil flashes back to when he was checking a mirror like 20 minutes ago <laughs> looking at himself. <laughs> like, Am I me? I, I know I'm me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Um. Hey, man. Uh. N- never mind. Let- Let's go. Let's get through this. Miles. Miles holds up a finger. And the answer's in its brain. Yes? Why do you bow to someone that is so afraid? So unworthy? Why do you let her suffer like that? Enslaved? She will bear the consequences for all her nights. I don't think it'll be all her nights. So long as you are unwilling to act, it shall be. The time may be approaching sooner than I thought. The court is gathered, Miles. You have within you the power to conquer any kindred. You need but say yes. Miles drops his finger and leads us out. What was that? Was that the... Was it? Was that the, um... Neil, like, taps the side of his head? Maybe you want to ask that later. Sure. Yeah, okay. It's not like I don't have enough on my mind right now. Right. That's a tomorrow problem. Man, we gotta stop doing that. That's what got us here. Well, not everything can be dealt with at once. Come along. Let's see if we can't manage our way out of this one. Okay, try my best. Oh, by the way, I'm your defense. Neil looks like actually relieved when Miles says I'm your defense. <laughs> Reese is your prosecutor. Yeah, I kind of figured that one. I have no idea how this is going to go. Depends, I guess, on if I give a confession. Let's try not to say no as much as I... Uh, yeah, let's go. Let's, yep. just, let's, let's see okay. what happens. Yeah, let's, yeah. Yep. We got some ideas. Up then Roland's gestures to his longtime friend, Reese, mm. to begin addressing the court. Reese steps forward, a uh, rather scrawny, diminutive man with a beakish nose and slick back hair. Court of New Haven. The reason that we are gathered was because and rumors had begun that Neil of the clan Malkavian had in fact been replaced by his blood-hunted sire. I wish to bring forward good news to the court. Neil is indeed who he says he is. We have performed the tests, and we believe that Neil is in fact the Malkavian kindred who acted valiantly during the lupine attack that happened not so long ago. However, During the course of our investigation, it became apparent that Neil is a student of his blood-hunted sire. He is a practitioner of foul desert magics, has been prone to the sacrifice of living people and animals alike in order to channel their power, and perhaps worst of all, like his sire, he is in league with an order of assassins hailing back to the legendary eagle's nest. Neil is the pawn of Asamites. There's like a slight gasp. Not only is he a pawn of these Asamites, uh, he was directly involved in a violation of the masquerade intended to usher members of this wayward clan into the domain, jeopardizing all of its citizens 
by exposing them to rampant diabolous monsters. It is so true that the Scourge initiated a takedown and successfully captured one of these Asamites. It is regrettable, no. No, it is suspicious that when one of these Asamites were brought in, others intervened, and as a result of their malicious intent, that Asamite continues to run free through this domain. None of you are safe. The Asamites are here. Neil has ensured that they arrive safely and with every advantage they need in order to take the unlives of the Camarilla Kindred. No doubt they are hired by the Sabbat. There's another gasp. It is no secret at this point that Neil's quartery is possessed of many ties to the Sabbat, and therefore it would be rather simple for Neil, who left with the Sabbat during the siege, to broker an agreement and offer the aid of the Asamites in exchange for his freedom. So yes, it would have been good news that such an upstanding kindred has returned to the domain safely, but unfortunately, Neil is no upstanding kindred. He is a madman, wielding the powers of Duran Ki, and uses them to betray this domain, to threaten our prince. His actions make that of Britta seem benign. But I am a man with an open mind. And I invite Miles to prove otherwise. He takes a step back and returns to his seat. I'll take a step forward. Present myself to the crowd. Present an entirely different figure than Reese. In many ways. Prove what? So far I've heard a number of accusations and... Very little proof of anything, but we will start with what we do know. As you established, this is Neil Foster, and he has learned of magics to help this domain in the case of the return of his sire. There's a gasp. Neil's face gets sort of a, like, at first, like, ah, shit, and then, because after 30 years of, like, don't tell anybody, just telling the court, he just, the reflex emotion... But then sort of resolves into a, all right, we're doing this. Let's do this, Miles. He, knowing the trouble that his sire caused the domain before, has sought to remove any stains to the clan of Mulcavian and has worked diligently in its defense and its rise in terms of the Camarilla. He's worked diligent with me and my coterie, as me as the sheriff, and with the former sheriffs of the domain to guarantee the safety of all of its citizens. Even during the attempted praxis of the domain, even when a lupine threatened the domain, he was there to protect you all and to help the coterie do so, do this. It would be a significant loss to the domain in the upcoming battle with the Sabbat that we would lose such a member that would help us defeat these forces. And for it to be implied that he is of the Sabbat, that the prince has put Sabbat Supporters in positions of power seems audacious to question the prince so much, especially with little to no evidence or proof. And an individual that hasn't shown up at court or supposedly got away seems very circumstantial at best. I think the benefit of the domain is that we reward Neil for his service by his continued service to the domain to continue the order and well-being of this domain in the face of all of the things that might be trying to bring it down. And I will take a sweep around, give a bow, take my seat. Reese comes forward. Court of New Haven. Miles vaguely makes reference to advantages provided by Neil. But what are they really? He gave no warning of the lupine attack, no warning of the Sabbat attack. He did not fight the lupine, did not fight the Sabbat, did not make any effort to preserve any country life, save for perhaps Elsa Linden, but we only believe that because she was forced to pay a boon. So, I will keep it simple, for Miles' sake. Does Neil possess Duranki? If so, who taught him? Did Neil bring an Asamite into the domain of Nehaven. How did Neil escape the Sabbat? 
He turns and heads back to his seat. Neil looks over at Miles, just silently sort of indicating with his face, like, do you want me to answer those questions? Do you want me to shut up? Like, give me some direction here, boss. I don't know what's going on. I, I'll stand up, signal for Neil that he might be talking, but not at this moment. It's swear that Reese brings up all of the defense of the domain during the incursion, because I was there and I didn't see him doing much of anything besides attacking my coterie, so... I'll have no attacks on anyone's character during this meeting, if you intend to bring something forward against... Oh, I was just reminding him... Mr. Reese, you're welcome to do... Do not interrupt me, you fool. (sighs) If you wish to bring allegations against my Seneschal, please do so after these questions have been answered. Whenever you are ready. Miles takes a moment and gives a small bow to the prince in regards to his words. I will let Neil speak to where he learned... Duranki, and why? Part of this, Tim seeking out a character, yeah. is I don't think I actually know. No, we did not explain that. <laughs> no, <Nope. laughs> so <laughs> I'm not comfortable just making shit up right now because you got to keep it right. <laughs> yep, and also we are surrounded by people who can tell when we're lying. Right. So like, <laughs> but I believe in his intent and his ability, and that also that he did try to warn the domain. About the coming of the lupine. The timing was difficult to pin down. And I will reach to raise Neil up in front of the crowd. Give him a steadying... He definitely needs a hand on his elbow to get him up. (laughs) Give him a steadying presence. Hand on the back so that he stands up straighter instead of his normal hunched. With Miles correcting his posture. Neil's actually reasonably tall. (laughs) Probably taller than Miles. And Miles will take a step back to allow Neil to take... The thing. Um, hi, everybody. I don't, uh, sorry, I'm not used to being in front of everyone. Um, so I'm, I'm just gonna look over there. And he turns and just looks directly at the prince and doesn't look at anyone else because a crowd will make him panic. So he just focuses all his energy on talking to the prince. It's true that I, uh, pursue a mastery of heaven and earth. Um, I learned it. Originally from my sire decades ago, just the very basic precepts before he went crazy and betrayed all of us and abandoned me. I kept trying to learn uh, at first out of a sense of curiosity, just knowledge to know things for the sake of knowing them. Uh, it was really hard to learn on my own. I didn't have any teachers or writings or just the very basic principles, but I I made a little progress. And then when in the 80s I met Miles and he brought me into his coterie, I had a new reason to keep learning. I wanted to be useful. I'm not... I, I wanted to do good. I wanted to do good for the domain and the Camarilla, and I wanted to prove that I was worth something. Uh, so I kept trying to learn on my own for a long time. Um, I don't have a lot of skill, but I I know enough to be useful. Also, I, I did try and warn people about the Lupine. Um, actually, I, I learned, I, I specifically beyond just trying to tell people about it, I told uh, the Coterie, and Johnny and Miles about it. And Johnny and Miles killed it. So, yeah. Also, I don't sacrifice people. That's insane. Um, that's that's like an insane thing to think. And he does look over at Elsa Reese laughs at the irony, and all of her Toreadors start laughing, and then the court laughs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Neil is looking at Reese, and so doesn't quite register that a bunch of Toreador are laughing at him. No, 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 no. no. Oh, they are no. not laughing they at him. Gotcha. No. Mm. So he your, doesn't register that. Your at joke, all. your comment became a quip, which became a successful quip. Thank you, Toreador. Toreador willed it. <laughs> it was really funny. <laughs> um, but he does, he is looking at Reese with this very earnest, which probably helps to sell it, but like. This very earnest, like, man, that's crazy. Like, don't, I don't. Yeah, who makes people into objects? Who sacrifices people? That's, that's crazy, <laughs> Thaumaturge. <laughs> um, and maybe just Reese would catch this because he's looking right at him, but there is sort of an undercurrent of like, 
And you would know that if you knew magic, right? <laughs> and he looks back at the prince. Uh, Your Grace, I, I, I'll answer any questions you have uh, at all. Who is the Sassamite? Which, which one? The one that you smuggled into the domain. We she- didn't smuggle anyone into the domain. Well, he seems to know what we're talking about, so... She uh, reached out to me um, and asked for my help uh, because there are a number of Asimites, um who very soon are likely to be looking for a shift in allegiances. And um, I, I know that it, it may be hard, hard to believe sometimes, but I, I am a... A uh, good representative of the Camarilla and and you, your grace, and, and the domain of New Haven. And so they reached out. Um, and my thinking was uh, if they're looking for a new home and a new p- person to pledge their allegiance to, uh, well, I, I love New Haven, so I, I live here and and this is your domain. And I thought maybe... He like kind of trails off, but there's the look on his face is very much like, "Hey, man, put the pieces together." That is positively the most ridiculous. And as he gets ready to continue ranting, Upton pauses when one of the Tremere breaks formation and approaches Reese with a cell phone, and very quietly they speak between each other, uh, close enough that you can still hear. And the apprentice says. My regent, something has happened. You are called... You are called to... Uh, our superiors have called upon you. And every magus in the region. And every region. And Reese kind of looks between Neil and the apprentice. What What has happened? The curse, Lord Reese. The curse has been broken. Reese's jawline tenses, and he kind of scans the room nervously. Um, forgive me, O oh Grace. There is uh, there is business elsewhere that I am called to. It would seem that something has happened among these Asamites, and they have delivered a blow against the Camarilla. I will um, endeavor to undress that as quickly as possible, uh, if you'll excuse me. And Johnny pipes up at this and actually goes, Your Grace, you asked this Tremere to, de- to prosecute him. Ask him to finish his work and not leave your court so callously. Reese, you are to turn and you are to finish your objective as assigned to you. Throughout, like... This whole little exchange, and even through Johnny's outburst and what the prince is saying, Neil is just looking directly at Reese. Britta is also looking directly at uh, Upton Rollins. <laughs> <laughs> As a reminder. <laughs> uh, it's a dashing figure up there. Neil is looking directly at Reese, and sort of to himself, sort of to Reese, just mutters the word schism. Reese's fist. The, his fists ball up until the whites of his knuckles become visible. Of course, Your Grace, considering that Neil has admitted to virtually every crime I've accused him of, it is my recommendation that he undergo ordeal. Does somebody want to explain ordeal? It is a form of trial among the Camarilla where a quest is given to a kindred who is believed to have violated Camarilla laws. This can be done by a prince or a Justicar. Parameters are given out, and if the kindred fails their ordeal, they are admitting guilt and suffer dire consequences, usually final death. Optin gives a nod to Reese as though he's fallen for his plan, and then winks at Miles. Oh my fucking god. Oh no. I hate this fucking guy. Jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I hate that. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) It is true. I have just the ordeal for you, Neil. Neil. He, like, licks his hands and, like, adjusts his hair. Yes, Your Grace. 
There is a concerted effort being made to repel the Sabbath. You are aware of much of it, and it is said by yourself and Miles that you intend to use your strange alien magics to help the domain rather than hinder it. It just so happens that there is an individual that has disrupted progress. Our allies, the followers of Set, have been developing a force and have forged deep alliances with the Anarch movement. There is one, however, that has been a thorn in our side. You will use your perverse assassin magic, and you will end the Bruja known as Amara once and for all. Two successes to uh, not frenzy. <laughs> Neil looks stricken. Not because he has like a super close relationship with Amara. He's met her like once, maybe ever. But just going on a murder mission is so... It's just, he doesn't... So Asimite. It's so Asimite. And also, it's just not Neil. But he says nothing. Do I get a rebuttal to this? Or is he making a proclamation at this point? Oh, no. He, 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 like, this is his proclamation. Uh, uh, which, you know, can be discussed. Miles. Yes, Prince. It has been brought to my attention by the followers of Set that they are owed by this court. I have made arrangements to see to it that this absolves your quarry of any debts owed to the followers of Set. And we can all move forward with a strong relationship. Uh, Neil, you are going to, you are given, uh, 60 nights to see to it that she meets final death. During this time, you are to be treated fairly. You will not be harassed or, uh, suffer any accusations regarding your behavior. And the, uh, Saracen that you have invited into this domain. Uh, is not to be destroyed. You will receive my tolerance uh, until we reconvene to discuss your performance. Yes, Your Grace. Is he legitimately declaring war against the fucking Anarchs in court, essentially? It's and- way worse than that. Yeah. Uh, what he's actually saying is that most of the Anarchs, uh, the followers of Set, have dug their claws into, and that there's one Anarch that's, like, basically resisting... Yeah, that's what we needed. A third war. Johnny's eyes flash over towards Weathers. What is his reaction? Weathers has very slowly gotten up, stepped away, and you catch him just as he slips out the door without anyone noticing. Johnny will slowly start backing away from the crowd and try to do the same to catch him before he leaves court. All right, give me a manipulation plus stealth. Two successes. All right. With two successes, you slip out. Um, Your, your Grace, I, I sort of, I, I don't want to make any assumptions as to your will. Um, do you want her, um, if she is to be destroyed uh, and she finds herself inside the bounds of your domain, uh, does this ordeal carry with it the right of, oh, she's an anarchist. Um, y- yes, sir. All kindred are bound by the traditions. And yes, you have right of destruction over this wayward Bruja. Yes, sir. Take her head, and when you have it, deliver it to the Setite Nofrit. She has indicated that she has use of her head. Yes, your grace. Neil looks like he's going to throw up, even more so than he kind of usually does, but doesn't... Domain, be made aware that Miles has performed admirably, and uh, through uh, his work with some support from his quartery, has uh, brought about the final death of Arabella Rollins, and as such, she be seen as a kindred of great standing within this domain. I guess I will take this opportunity to take out her dignitas. 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 I knew. I knew there was a fancy word for it. Get close and present it to him, and I'm like, Your Grace, this declaration in open court. Yes, of course. He's not getting it. I pass it over to him. (laughs) Miles has demonstrated incredible loyalty to this domain, and as such, I have one final decree for the evening before I go about my business. Oh, fuck. 
<laughs> Let it be known that Miles is relieved of his position as sheriff of this domain, and he will instead serve as my seneschal. Fuck. Please say that was in character. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what is my host's reaction? I need a, I uh, need a narrative. <laughs> do you a, a narrative? His face is very much a sign of great acceptance and a, a great gift from his prince. Those in his coterie can be like, or like fucking, he wants to like kill someone. Subterfuge. Okay. Straight face. Yeah. Uh, is that in my bonus is coming into this? Prestigious sire or anything like that? Yeah, you can have prestigious sire. Cool. Four, five successes. You nail it. Maybe I was born to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Reese does not look unfazed by this decree. And as he slinks off to go deal with whatever pressing issue he has been approached about, he gives you this look like a war has just been declared. And then he heads off. And Upton, who is blissfully unaware of this, says, Seneschal, you have two responsibilities that are laid before you. I expect both of them done post-haste. First, you will find a new sheriff to replace you. And secondly, this killing spree has resided in my domain quite long enough. See to it that they are eradicated. Yes, your prince. Oh, and one more thing. Is he, like, saying this low? He, like, leans over and puts his, like, arm around your shoulder. And, like, you can, like like feel his like scratchy stubble like against your ear that he gets so like close there is an off chance that Reese may be offended in case he is I happen to know of something he wants very much so quietly I wish for you to arrange something there is a man as you know he was the man responsible for the house that has all these odd rubbish rumors Uh, what was that name? Xantosa. Yes, Xantosa. See to it that he is acquired and turned over to Reese. He pats him on the back, gets up, and walks away. I guess I approach the die, like the dice at that point, and be like, I guess this is adjourned. The court kind of gives you. For, like, you actually get, like, a bit of, like, a look of, like, kind of understanding <laughs> from a lot of the court, and they seem relieved that someone adjourned it, and they start going about their business. Before they go too far, mm-hmm. one thing, I say this is Miles Davenport of Clan Ventru. Elsa Linden has been a great asset to the court and a pleasure to have in the Elysium, and I wish to apologize for anything that I may have said or done that showed any disrespect to her or clan Toreador. And I will, like, put my hand out and, like, bow my head towards her and her general direction out over that way. There's a pregnant pause before Elsa makes extremely light with the fact that there was just a trial and gives a simple wink as her response. I can give her a smile back and nod, and hopefully the air is changed in this court and I want to go murder something. <laughs> The Toreador obviously fawn over how smooth she was, and there seems to be this very sudden break in tension when she winks. And I will remove myself from my dais and, like, look at Neil and, like, give him a shoulder shrug and, like... Uh, congratulations? No. Uh, but congratulations to you, at least for now. Am I, well, I don't... We're, we're gonna have to... This whole thing was... Yeah. Britta is just in the middle of the conversation going to hug Neil. Hey, th- thanks. Um, I, I mean, everybody, really everybody, uh, but you two, uh, and Win, well, everyone, Win too, Johnny, I, yeah, yeah lit- I mean, literally, I, let's get you over and out of there. Is it, yeah, can I go into like another room or something for a minute? I'm about to cry. Yeah. Britta steps back. Mm-hmm. Britta take him I don't want to cry. I gotta go check. In front of all the Tory door and. <laughs> I don't see weathers anywhere. Nor do hey, you see where's Johnny. Johnny? Path of Night is an actual play Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the classic world of darkness. Britta Ashcroft the Toreador was played by Rebecca Steigelfest. Johnny Saxon the Bruja was played by Garrett Gabby. Miles Davenport the Venture was played by Tim Davis. Neil Foster the Malkavian was played by Rob Meerhead. Win Cabot the Gangrel was played by Erica Webb. Your storyteller was Lex Lopez. Recording by Rebecca Steigelfest. 
This episode was edited by Rob Muirhead. The music used in this episode was January Grunge Love Fest by Technoaxe. Visit them online at technoaxe.com. Path of Night uses the 20th anniversary edition rule set of Vampire the Masquerade with a few limited house rules. Vampire the Masquerade is owned by Paradox Interactive. Make sure to subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on Twitter at Path of Night Pod, on Facebook at facebook.com slash Path of Night Podcast, or email us at Path of Night Podcast at gmail.com. See you next time, Kendrick. The Screaming Neil, which is not a drink. <laughs> For all the listeners out there, if you come up with a great recipe for a screaming meal, we will definitely try to drink it. Mm. A drunk recording, all of us on screaming meals. All right, what do we think it is? What, what do we think is it a screaming meal? Tequila. That's what I, I mean, say. tequila is my is is Can we Rob's go to liquor. I thought it was going to be gin, to be real. Yeah, I don't know why <laughs> gin and tequila. I can see I can <laughs> yeah. see gin being in a screaming meal. So what oh god, not gin and tequila? tequila? <laughs> no. Yeah. What is the matter with That's you? That's the screaming part. Um. <laughs> yep. Screaming Neil is is gin, tequila, bitters, and milk. <laughs> <laughs> We're not drinking that. No. <laughs> well, Garrett, mm, subscribe to our Patreon, and I will drink it. <laughs> save that bit. <laughs> oh man, Rob, save that. <laughs> Maybe elderflower liqueur, like a Saint Germain, in there, maybe. Mm. I do that. The milk is the does, key. Does Saint Germain and tequila mix well? I don't, I don't see why know. they wouldn't. I don't... I don't know that any of this mixes well. Can you it's... do like absinthe and tequila? Oh, mm. I don't know alcohols very well, so absinthe, like I'm just absinthe is a very strong uh, yeah, liqueur yeah. flavor. Yeah, I don't know that that would necessarily complement any. Oh, it would not. Uh, no. Yeah, you need like citrus with absinthe, really. Gotcha. I think. What about hibiscus? Uh, all right. Now I'm thinking of in character. Like, hey, what are some Neil things? Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm just an old can of Surge nope. and some absinthe, and you just mix them together. What about like nightshade? Can we drink that? What <laughs> flavor? That, that would. Surge. That would that's a lethal poison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>